Okay. Now we want to talk about fluid transducers. And uh, one way, I don't know if you can see this. One way, one thing about it, one type of fluid transducer is a, a manometer. And a manometer just measures pressure differences from one side to the next. It's measuring the pressure difference between this side of the tube and this side. And you notice the water is at the same level. But if I have a little bit of pressure on this side, it's going to raise it. There we go. If I have a little bit of pressure on one side, it's going to push down harder, and it's going to raise the other side a certain amount. And the amount of fluid, the difference in the height between these two fluids, which looks to be about six inches, can be directly correlated to a pressure difference. And these things are very accurate. It's, it's amazing. Um, I can use water, and it takes, I think, one atmosphere of pressure is about 34 feet of water, which is quite a bit, uh, you know, 10 meters. Um, I could use mercury, and that's more like uh, 76 centimeters or 29 inches of water for one atmosphere. If I need really fine measurements, you know, water is nice because it's less dense than mercury. But if I need really fine measurements, I could use a light oil, for example, and, it would, and a pressure change would produce a much greater difference. So you can measure very small pressure differences very accurately uh, with just something this simple, a manometer. Uh, there are a lot of very expensive labs with lots of equipment going on, and they've just got these glass tubes on the wall measuring the pressure difference. Manometers are very cool. Uh, another cheap and very useful pressure measuring device is the, the Bordon tube. You know, you've seen these gauges, pressure gauges all over the place. Uh, how do they work? Something's got to cause that needle to move. And what it is, is the Borden tube is a C-shaped, well, C-shaped clamp right here. And fluid comes in here, and as it does, it pressurizes this clamp. And if you pressurize it, well, let's see. The pressure's the same on this side, on the inside, and on the outside. But if I apply pressure, if I increase the pressure, there's more area on the outside than on the inside, so the force on the outside is going to be greater. Well, I'll show this on the board. Let's see. Pressure is force per area. So if one side, if the pressure is the same on both sides, if one side has a greater area and the pressure is the same, it must have a greater force as well. And so what that's going to do is it's going to take a curved object that you fill with fluid and this side has less area than this side, or this side has more area than this side, and it's going to cause a bigger force on this side and that puppy's going to straighten out. This has many useful uh, uses biology and also measuring pressure. Another example of a Bordon tube is, uh, right, less area, more area. Okay, Bordon tube's great because you can calibrate the type of C-clamp uh, that you use and you can figure out, use it for different types of pressure. Very useful tool. Um, aneroid barometer. Aneroid barometer. It's this little can here. Uh, and the can is inside this barometer. And you've seen these before. I mean, this is uh, these are on the walls of a lot of places. It's just a barometer, but this is what's inside. Is this this little uh, diaphragm right here. And the diaphragm's filled with air. Now, as air pressure outside decreases, the diaphragm expands and it moves the needle. As the air pressure increases, the diaphragm contracts and it moves the needle. It's a very simple mechanical mechanism. As a matter of fact, these are used uh, as altimeters as well because as you go up, the air pressure drops. And until very recently when we got GPS, uh, the primary method of determining altitude was the air pressure. As you go up, like I said, the air pressure drops. Now, this can's going to expand and it's going to move a needle. And the needle's going to tell you you're moving up in altitude. Very simple device. What else? Um, turbine flow meter. 
Let me get rid of that because it's disgusting. Turbine flow meter. What you do is you got a you got a prop. Say it's a say I've got flow moving this way, and uh, I've got a coil of wire. Above it. Now, as we've talked about before, a fluctuating magnetic field, that sloshing magnetic field, will slosh electrons. So if I've got a coil of wire, it'll, it'll slosh it. And so what happens here is you can have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight blades on these. And on one of the blades, you stick a magnet. So as it sweeps through, as it moves through, it's going to increase the magnetic field up here. It's going to feel an increase in the magnetic field, and then it's going to feel a drop in the magnetic field. Increase, drop, increase, drop, up, down, up, down, sloshing, sloshing, produces a current. And the current can move a, the current can move a needle. And we'll talk about that when we uh, talk about uh, multimeters in the last section of transducers. So, um, turbine flow meters, this needle is powered simply by the motion of the turbine flow meter. Uh, this works on uh, anemometers, you know the cupped anemometers that spin around on a, a, on, a wind, on a weather system, a weather station. Well that's the same thing that right on the side there's a, and if you pull open the anemometer there's a little magnet on one side and there's a coil of wire and as it sweeps through that coil of wire it produces a current. And so it powers um, the meter that reads the, uh, the wind speed. Turbine flow meters. Let's see other methods of determining speed, transducers, differential pressure cells. 